Well, this is a picture of the family homestead. And my forefathers and, and uh, my great-grandmother, great um, and, and that's great-grandfather, Matthew. And I'm sorry, I can't name all of these. Some of them are children. I know this feller's a suitor. He's after this aunt here. There was two brothers married two sisters, two Romney sisters. And interesting enough, there was three siblings intermarried with three siblings. So there was a, a family of crooks, last name crook without the S. And there was two brothers and a sister married two sisters and a brother that were Romneys. And there's two Edwards uh, brothers that married two Rumney sisters. So quite a large family. And I believe it was, I believe it was 2000, there was a, a year, it was the coldest winter in 100 years. And the next winter was the most snowfall in 100 years. And of course, easy to feel sorry for yourself. We went six weeks without it going about freezing. And I have this picture on the wall in the kitchen and every time I feel sorry for myself, boo-hoo, because it's so cold, I thought of these people because 100 years ago they were facing the same thing. They did not have a 4x4 SUV parked outside. They did not have internet. They didn't have a telephone. They didn't have a TV. They had nothing but themselves to entertain themselves. Two wood stoves and a big pile of firewood to go in it every day and a barn full of livestock to look after. So a, lo a lot of heritage here. Um, Grand grandfather Matthew died in 1905, and one of these small boys, we're not sure which one, was Joe Rumney. He died the same year, 1905. They both died of blood poisoning. Uh, Matthew cut himself on a scythe crossing a fence. He used to do custom th scything, custom harvesting with a scythe, and I guess he was doing some work for a neighbor and set the scythe on the other side of the fence and stepped over, slipped, and cut his leg on the scythe, which got infected, and of course, no penicillin back then, basic knowledge of, of infection. And Joe, Joseph Rumney, he was killed just up the road at the corner of Hog Valley and Rumney Road. And they were working in the bush and a tree fell on him and broke his leg. And the same thing there, blood poisoning set in and he died of blood poisoning. So 1905 was not a happy date. So the only thing I can say about this picture is it's, it was uh, taken before 1905. Uh, now the house was constructed in 1888 and uh, the first building they, let me back up. When they came in, in 1882, there was a pioneer cabin across the road, which is now on the Jones property. And that was for the early settlers to come and live in. It wasn't deeded, you know, if you came to the area, this is what you lived in until you built your own building. So our farm needed to be cleared. And in 1884, so two years after they arrived, they put up the little barn, which is still there. It was one of the original buildings, it's off to the side. And they built that, and then two years later, they built the big barn in 1886. And it was a monster. It was an engineering feat, basically a pioneering masterpiece as far as I was concerned. Huge. And of course, the neighbors all laughed at him. Oh, you'll never fill that barn, you know, what are you building it so big for? And obviously, it was full many, many times over the years. And the third thing they did is they built the house. So while they were building the little barn, they lived across the road in the pioneer uh, cabin. And then they, had, they lived in the little barn. It was, they insulated the walls, and you can see still the same hole where the chimney went out through the wall. And I guess they lived that, maybe not in the heart of winter, but it was they were working on the big barn. And then when the big barn was finished, then they built the house. Now, the interesting thing about the brick on this house is it came from a brickyard on the corner of Highway 35 and 7, just outside of Lindsay which is no longer there, obviously. So if you go down in that part of the country, a lot of yellow brick homes. So the three homes in the valley, one is just down the road, that was John Rumney's house. He built that sometime after this one was built. And then the Jones house right across the road. They were all bricked with the same load of brick. So a carload of bricks came up from Lindsay on the Midland Railroad to Victoria Harbor and was hand bombed off, no forklifts, lifting skids. Onto uh, sleighs in the winter would be the obvious time to haul it up the valley and build. So we put an addition on the back of this house in about 2003, and I think there were 16 or 17 skids of brick that we got, all recycled brick, all matching brick from down that Peterborough area. And the fellow on the forklifts was bringing them up and said, boy, these skids are heavy. These are really heavy bricks. 
Well, the, it's just boggling to think of coming down here, hand bombing the bricks off, a whole train carload of them, hand bombing them off into sleighs. How many sleigh trips up the valley to unload them? And then where's your mortar come from? Well, you go to a place where there's sand, and then you get the lime and everything mixed by hand. And it, I just shake my head. I don't think there was a problem with obesity back then. I don't think the depression was a serious condition. I don't think the type 2 diabetes was an issue back then. You either ate or you starved, or you worked or you starved. If you want, wanted to eat, you had to work. So anyway, a lot of admiration I have for these people. It just, it just boggles me. And unfortunately, the, every generation, I think, just gets softer and softer and more afraid of hard work. Anyway, that's the story of, uh, of our family home.